All right, so in a minute, I'm gonna share with you guys a conversation I had with my team about the impact that investing in personal mentorship and coaching has had on my personal life. And my team shares how that has impacted their lives as well. I'm gonna share that conversation in just a second. But before I do, I wanna share this big idea, this big concept that uh, I think a lot of people have a very difficult time understanding to be fair. And I showed my friend something who also had a very difficult time really grasping the this big idea that I will share with you in just a minute around investing in yourself versus investing in, in the market. And so because what he said to me was, dude, once once you showed that to me, it was like seeing for the first time. That's how big of an impact it had on him as it had on me. And so perhaps it will have an impact on you. Uh, perhaps it won't. Maybe this is for you. Maybe this isn't. But I want to show you the uh, this big idea regardless. So first, to look at this, I want you to look at what most human beings, um, their, like how their worldview, like how they view investing and retirement and all of that stuff. And so the vast majority of the world, I would say almost everybody, looks at what I'm about to show you here and says, yep, that makes sense to me. And so if we just look at the average person that's earning $50,000 a year, contributing about 15% of their income or $7,500 a year into a 401k, they get their annual raise every single year, they save money for 30 years, and they get their 7% return on their 401k in 30 years they'll have about 1.3 million dollars saved for retirement and millions and millions and millions of people look at that and don't bat an eye they don't even second guess it it's almost like uh that's a given what i just outlined for you and and no one has an issue with that in fact you know financial planners are they earn millions and millions and millions of dollars in personal income performing based on what i just showed you give me your money if i give you a seven eight percent return you're happy i make my one percent fee off that and in 30 years you have about a million bucks awesome that's beautiful i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that and so let me show you just a different path this is the path that i decided again i'm not suggesting that this is the path for you but i'll just share with you what what I did, what I share with my friend, that he told me changed everything for him. So here's what this looks like. So this is investing in yourself, in high income skills versus the market, right? And I just showed you what the market looks like. And so when I talk about investing in yourself, I'm talking about high income skills, learning how to sell, learning how to lead other people, entrepreneurship, and learning how to market, advertise, and generate leads. That's what I'm talking about specifically. So I showed him kind of like what my world looks like as, a, as, uh, as an example. And so I said, right now, I am paying about 5k per month in coaching and that's what that looks like right now and he was like dude you're paying five thousand dollars a month to somebody right now to coach you I, I i could not afford to do that like that's insane to me to which i responded i said i get it i said i understand like if I if this is all I showed you, then I think without context, five thousand dollars could be expensive because price is what you pay. However, value is what you get. And I told him, I said, well, as a result of working with my coach this year, I will earn about four million dollars in income. And now, yeah, I've got some, whoop, I got some expenses on that for sure. But nonetheless, that's what I will earn. 
And so the difference between these two, of course, between the price you pay and what you get in return is just like I said, the value you get. And so he looked at this and he's like, wait a minute. You're you're gonna you're gonna pay what 60k per year to your coach, right? And in return, you're going to get you're gonna earn a four million dollar income this year. And I said, yeah, because price is what you pay, value is what you get. But th that's not the whole story, right? That's just ROI, return on investment. And if we do some simple math, if we say, okay, well, what is the profit on this? So if I take the $4 million and I subtract out the $60,000, which is my cost basis. So we look at that, the, the cost basis we just said was 60K, right? And the profit on this investment is 4 million minus the $60,000 cost. The profit is $3,940. And if I divide that by the 60,000, and I multiply that by 100, we get the ROI equals 6,566%. And when I showed this to him, he was like, it took him a minute to really grasp what I was saying. And he's like, everybody would do, why is, why is everybody not doing this? I'm getting a 7-8% from my financial planner. You're getting a 6,500% return on your investment annually, right? Because he, you know, most of the people are going to get a million, they'll, they'll, if they save for 30 years, they'll get about a million bucks or so at the end of 30 years versus investing in high income skills. This is kind of what my world looks like. And then I showed him this other piece that he said, I'll never be able to forget this. And so here's what I showed him. I said, there's another variable to this that I think most people don't even consider because what you're seeing on screen right now, everyone can conceptualize that and, and say that that makes sense. However, there's also something called COI. And it stands for the cost of inaction. And so what I mean by that is, for those, or if I were to not, let's just call, if I were to say, nope, I can't afford that price and I didn't learn these high income skills, well then as a result, I would not now have a $4 million annual income per year. In other words, not learning these high income skills is costing me, I'm losing three million nine hundred and forty thousand dollars per year by not knowing the skills alex ramosi calls this the ignorant tax we call it the cost of inaction because price is what you pay value is what you get if i don't pay the price of five thousand dollars per month or 60k a year i don't get the upside and so the reality is this is by not doing this this downstream impact is my loss and so when we look at this now with context and say holy crap option a is to invest 60k per year and in this example get four million dollars or three million nine hundred in return or like i think most people look at this and say i can't afford the 5k per month fine that's your that's your decision now you don't get to earn four million dollars a year the decision is yours either way the question you have to answer is which of these do you want to part ways with would you rather part ways with this five thousand dollars a month or 60k per year or would you rather lose four million dollars a year either way there's a cost now let me show you uh how this looks like in our world because I think there's a, there's a lot of real estate agents that reach out to us for coaching who have this mindset of like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't afford coaching. I understand that worldview. I was the same way until I really started to understand the returns I was getting from coaching for the past 15 years of investing in myself. It wasn't 4 million at first, to be fair. You know, I was investing 
uh, with multiple different coaches over the past 15 years. And my income went from 100,000 to 200,000 to 500,000 to 800,000 to uh, 1.3, then to 2.2. It, it just continued to go up the more and more I invested in my high income skills. So this is this is an example of most real estate agents is they, they come to us and the average uh, real estate agent, like the example I showed you before, they earn about $50,000 per year. And so when they, when they look at investing in coaching, it doesn't matter if that's with me or another coaching company, let's just use an example, right? Everybody's got different programs and different cost structures, but let's just use the example. Let's just say that the investment for coaching with the average coaching company is, let's just call it 12K per year. And so, fine. We say, okay, that's the average investment. All right, same thing. The mindset for most real estate agents is, well, I can't afford to do that. And that's fine because here's the, the other consideration. For those that do, right, there's an upside to coaching. That's why people do it. And so if we look at the upside, and we say like in our world, our, our agents typically within their first 12 months and working with us can go from you know, 40, 50K a year to 100, 150,000 in their first 12 months in working with us. So if the upside is 150K per year, we'll say, okay, that's, that's, the, that's the upside, just like we were talking about, right? So this was the price of coaching as an example and the return well let's calculate it let's look at the roi here so the cost basis we just said was twelve thousand. and if we this difference this is what we get in return this is our value the profit from that value in this case is one hundred fifty thousand minus the twelve thousand dollar investment the profit is 138 Oh, no, I'm sorry, that was 100K. So it's 100K diff. So you were making 50, now there's 100K diff. So it's 100K minus your 12K investment. So the profit's 88,000 to be fair, right? Cool, if I divide that by the cost, the ROI is 733%. That is the return on this investment. That is the upside to investing in someone's self. So when someone says, I can't afford to get into coaching, my mindset has, has been, is, is now, and will always be, I can't afford not to. Because the same thing is true. If we look at, okay, this is the COI, this is the cost of inaction. That same agent that's earning $50,000, if they do nothing and they stay the same, is it fair that at the end of 12 months, they're still earning their 50,000? Well, the cost of not investing in themselves and learning high income skills, it's costing them the income $150,000 a year. That's the difference between these two, right? So now they have this $100,000 per year loss. And I think most people don't, don't understand this. They don't look at it. They don't, they don't consider this. But regardless of one's decision to invest in themselves or not, there's still a massive price to pay. Well, what do you mean, Brandon? Well, you get to choose. You can choose to option A, just like I talked about before, you can in invest in yourself, whatever uh, that dollar amount might be. And by investing in yourself and increasing your income potential, your income capabilities, your high income skills, there will be an upside on that, a direct upside that will outperform any investment in the world virtually guaranteed. And the other cost, if you decide, nope, that's not for me, you have the maybe a scarcity mindset to say, I can't afford to get into coaching. That's fine too, just understand you're leaving things as the status quo, right? So if you stay status quo, which is your it's your, it's your decision, and you say, I'm earning 50K now, if nothing changes in a year from now, why would I be making more? It's probably gonna be about the same. Well, it's fair to say 
that 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 decision costs you a hundred thousand dollars a year every single year you don't up your skill set so anyway I, I share this with you to expand maybe perhaps your worldview and the way I look at investing in myself that's why I continue to double down triple down um and, and, and continue to level up with the mentors that I that I continue to hire because every time I work with another mentor, my income capacity also increases. And so, let me right now. Hopefully, that made sense. Um, let me share this deep conversation I had with my team, so that maybe for the first time, there's some stories in there that I've shared with you guys here, the audience, that I've never shared before on the impact this investment has made on my life. The value of coaching. Now, let me tee this up. Before we get into this, I want the audience to know, wherever you watch this, wherever you hear this podcast conversation, this is this is not, and I repeat, this is not some type of sales pitch for you to get into coaching with us. This has to do with, like, I want to speak from my own experience, the value of coaching that it has had on my life and my career. And I, and I want the, you know the same from you, from you guys, you know, just the value you've gotten in, in investing in yourself. Cause I think there's some really good things to share, um, that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time. So let's, let's jump into it. So the way I'll tee this up is, and this, I tell the story quite often, actually. Um, the, I think, Comparison and, and contrasting something next to each other is is the best way to to kind of see the difference, right? So I have two brothers. I have a stepbrother, and I have my blood brother. Both, all three of us grew up together, so I just call them both my my brothers. Both of them have one has a master's degree in psychology, and one has a One's an attorney, so has his undergrad in psychology and then has um, his law degree. All right. So very, very highly, highly, highly educated. And I'm going to share some things with the audience that I haven't ever shared before, just because I, you know, I just, I believe in transparency. Like I barely finished high school, like barely. I never went to high school. I skipped school most of the time. I think I had a 1.3 or 1.6. GPA. I'm gonna get my uh, I'm gonna get my uh, report card from my mom because I want to show it to to the audience. But I think it was a 1.3 GPA. No college education whatsoever. Barely, like I said, barely finished high school. I failed every single class. Now we're all about 40. I'm 40. One brother's 42. The other one's 43. One's an attorney. Other one's highly, highly educated. And here's just the truth. I actually just thought about this right now. They ask me all the time. So this isn't about like, oh, let me try to impress people. I My monthly income surpasses both of their annual incomes combined. Wow. And I know, I just that just hit me. And I'm like, well, how is that possible? And it's only one answer, coaching. Hmm. And I'll talk about specifically like why that is, what I've gotten from coaching and how that's even possible. But to me, if there was a, ever a case to be made for coaching, it's me. I'm like the poster child. I've spent, I don't know, maybe 200,000, 300,000 in coaching perhaps. Similar to my one brother in law school, he owes I think 200 in in student loans for for law school. You know, and he makes 80 grand a year um as, as an attorney. Just fine, great, good for you, you know. Um, but it's crazy. He owes two hundred, and I spent the same amount. My education, I would make the argument, got me a lot further than his. So let me just pause there, see if you guys that resonates with you guys. Get your thoughts on that. Uh, any teeing up from from this conversation from your perspective, and then we'll even get deeper. Go ahead, Ben. So it's funny that you took that line of thought i had the exact same thought like that was my same process of working through this topic is we look at education out there and what's interesting if, is you compare what the world tells us to do it's like go to school 
get all this training before your job and then get the job and yep. then you're done. You, you have a boss, maybe you work a little bit and just through experience, get better where the approach you've taken is more like an athlete where athletes have this perception of you're never done. You always need to be getting better. You always need to be getting coached. And it's just funny that that comparison that you put out there, you look at how much athletes work on their craft, how much they make, how much they spend on nutrition, this, that, the other. And then you look at these other professionals where some make a lot of money, business owners, whatever, but the ones that really succeed are the ones that are getting coaching. And it's just such a good interesting. Point. Yeah. yeah, it is interesting because, you know, I had one brother for the longest time almost try to like, like, um, talk shit like, dude, oh, you got another guru mentor. What are you doing? Another online course? Like, good luck with all that. You know, I remember him saying that, you know, and, um, you know, it, the, the thought for most human beings in their adult life, like when you say, when you talk about coaching in a professional manner, they have no idea what you're talking about. You know, it's funny. Like, what do you mean you have a co you have a coach? What are you talking about? Why would you pay for that? It's so out of the ordinary well, for people. I, I think it's because they 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 put formal education yeah. so far ahead of what you could pay somebody outside of a university for education. When in yeah. reality you're paying maybe just as much as getting a class for yeah. that specific person that's an expert. The other, the other thing is like with traditional education, like it's funny. I, so oh, I went that, to- You gotta move that mic back or something. You're blowing oh, our eardrums out. How's this? <laughs> is this all right? Is this good? Yeah, it's probably a little bit better, yeah. All right, so I, I mean, I went to uh, college for like a year and a half, two years. Is that is that you adjusting it? Is it all right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll figure it and, out. That's uh, how it goes on a live podcast. Dude, it's crazy. And I and I talked to a lot of people, like a couple of my friends like went to business school. And it's like, if you talk to the professor or ask the professor, like, so like, you know, what what business do you own or what business have you had? It's like, oh, well, I, I mean, I don't have a business, but like so I have true. a degree in business. And the so like concept. when you go to a coach, you're learning from somebody who's accomplished something in the real right. world that you're learning from their experience. Dude, and, and I don't know why that's so difficult for people to accept or understand. I mean, it's a really, really basic, simple concept. You think all these people with all this formal education would understand, wouldn't it make more sense if you want to learn how to run a business, just go find someone who actually has a business and has succeeded in that business and just ask them, hey, can you show me how you did it? Like to me, mm -hmm. I don't know, like call me crazy. I feel like a child can understand that concept, but like these highly educated people, double double masters and this and that and all these, you know, little words, uh, letters behind their name. I, I, I don't understand personal development. I just don't understand it. I understand. I know you don't. But if you ask any highly uh, successful, I'm talking about income now. I'm talking about the 1% income earners. They're all in coaching. And then when you ask the run of the mill, the herd, the 99%, and you talk about coaching, they have no idea with what you're talking about. To me, that's enough evidence. If the top performers in every single industry are in some type of coaching and the bottom 99%, everybody else isn't. I mean, isn't that enough evidence to say, you know, how, how is there even an argument against it? I don't know. That's the way I look at it. Well, and the, the, the traditional education system hasn't changed since the, you know, the industrial era, like the way it was designed was to get people to learn a skill, learn a trade, go in the factory, do a job and, and turn you into an employee, which, which again, like you said, Brandon is fine. If that's what you want to do, like if you want to be a lawyer, you, yeah, you have to go get a, you know, you have to go get your law degree, but it, it's it, to your point. It's so crazy when people look at like coaching different, like different kind of education is crazy when the traditional education system hasn't changed at all. Like to me, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. I think the best way I've ever, I've ever heard it. And then we'll get into some more details is, is the way that, uh, Hermosi talks about it. The ignorant tax. Mm -hmm. it, it is mm -hmm. the best, best way, right? If anybody has any ambition, right. And we talk to a lot of real estate agents, 
who reach out to us for coaching and the magic word or the magic number is 100K. I want to make 100K. I want to make 100K. I want to make 100K. And, and most of these people are coming out of a world where they've never made six figures before, right? And so it's this magic number. And the way that Hermosi talks about this is like the difference between where you are now and where you want to be, not knowing how to earn that amount of income is the ignorant tax. That's why he talks about the SME 500 versus the S&P 500. That's why he talks about the, the massive focus of investing in one's own uh, ability to earn more skill sets, character traits, mindsets, to bridge that gap. Because if somebody is making $50,000 a year and they have aspirations of making $100,000 or $200,000, well, that $100,000 or that $50,000 gap in between where they are and where they want to be that is pretty damn expensive. And this gets right into my first point. Most scarcity fixed mindset humans look at coaching from the standpoint of, well, I can't afford it. Mm. But they don't understand that they're paying way more in ignorant tax, not doing the coaching that is far less expensive than what it would be that they're paying. They don't see it that way. If coaching is a thousand or fifteen hundred bucks a month or whatever it's going to be, so call it twelve or eighteen, twenty grand a year, whatever, whatever the coach is that charges, right? That's a lot less than fifty, seventy-five, or a hundred thousand a year. Every year, you don't go from fifty thousand to a hundred or hundred fifty or two hundred thousand. And so, the abundant mindset, the growth mindset, individual says, "I can't afford not." to be in coaching. Huge difference. Your guys' thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I agree 100%. They're, they're so focused on what they have to give up, not what they could potentially gain. Yeah. Yeah. And it's... Go ahead, Cole. You want to add something? No, yeah. Like, uh, and just uh, just using examples from from my experience talking to people, yeah. it's, it's, more, it's more so about the individual you're talking to. Like, you know, everybody falls into tough times. Like we've all been in a position where like we, we don't have resources, like we don't have money. And so, you know, there, there's one thing to talk about your circumstances, but when I have, you know, an 18 year old kid who has $300 in his bank account, like say, all right, I can't afford coaching right now, but I'll be back in two weeks. And he has money. Like he got resourceful, you know, that, that like shows it's not about your resources or, or not. It's, are you willing to pay that ignorance tax and yeah pe people will sit there and tell us how difficult it is how how stressful it's been how this is affecting their family how they're losing a couple listings a month how much that's costing them versus what any kind of coaching would cost it's well so there's two different. things there so this person who says they have no money i'm like yeah no shit that's why right. you reached out for coaching had you been successful you would have been in coaching <laughs> We wouldn't be right. having this conversation. I know you're broke. Yeah. Isn't that ironic? Is like the broke people are never in coaching. It's what I said at the beginning of the show. Well, highly they always successful. Feel like go ahead. No, go ahead. Keep going. Well, well, highly successful people that are in coaching, they don't reach out and say that they're broke. Isn't that so? There's one. The other thing is the analogy of the Ferrari. So you talk about the person who says uh, that can get resources. You're exactly right. Most people say, well, I can't afford to go and spend $300,000 on a Ferrari. I know. But if that same Ferrari was $100,000 and there was a $200,000 value gap and you knew that thing was worth $300,000, it wouldn't be a question of, can you afford it? The question would be, how fast could you find the $100,000 to buy the Ferrari because there's $200,000 of value? That's the same thing with coaching. It's not about, do you have the resources to pay. It's about how do you find the resources so you're not in the position where you don't have any money. That's the difference. Go ahead, Ben. What are we going to say? No, I. It's awesome. I love that story. Yeah. Um, I gotta I gotta get back on track here. Um, I I think that you you look at people saying that I can't afford it, but it's um, it it's not. It's they think they need to arrive before they deserve That's to right. have it. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Sorry, it took oh, me a minute. Oh, so good, Benny. Yeah. It's, but the it's people the, that are already in coaching, right? They, 
they look at these people super successful, have a coach, right? And they're like, I don't deserve that yet. I got to go sell a couple listings. I got to do this. Right. I got to do that. And it's like, sure, you can. But isn't it fair to say that if you did this first, maybe you'd become that type of person? That's so true. Well, I got to close a couple deals before I can get into coaching. Well, right. aren't you missing the point? Go ahead, Colton. No, well, well, now, now I've got that point. It's like, yeah, I need, I need to make, get some money to close some de- to like and close some deals before I can afford coaching. Where you know you you need the skills and the systems and the the consistency and accountability to close those deals. It's like, I, man, I want to get in the best shape of my life. Brandon just went through, and he's still going through an incredible fitness journey the yeah. last you know however many years. And if Brandon were to say, you know what, once I start to see a six pack come through, I'll start heading to the gym and eating right. It's like so a hire a spot trainer. on. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. yeah. What, 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 um, once I get a six pack, I'll start thinking about getting into shape. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh, no, I lost my other point. That was really good. But well, I want to, I want to, I bet you it was good. I know. I told you there's a lot of good things with this conversation. So if they hit it, just, just jump in. All right. Um, yeah. So I want to make this less about like, you know, maybe real estate agents getting into coaching. Sure. I want to, I want to, oh, I want to, I remembered it. I remember right, it. I'm go. jumping I knew in. It would. Go. Um, so ben, ben talked about like the, the, it's essentially kind of like give, the giving yourself permission thing, right? It's like, yeah. One of the best things I've ever gotten for coaching, this is getting outside of real estate now, you know, besides the skills and the people, I've been in some coaching programs where I'm still like really tight with a couple of the guys I met in there. Like we're, we're just tight, you know, but besides all of that, one of the best things I got from coaching was just getting permission to, to like, you can be good. Like ever, everyone else who's succeeding at these things, like they're no different than you. Like, why are you yeah. self-imposing a limiting belief that you have to be do this before you can be that like dude you can do it right now and it's just the first it's it's the first point on my little notes that i took about this topic the first first piece of i'll I'll get real practical now right so the first piece of practical like what coaching has done for me is giving me access to other people that have walked before me and giving me access to people that i would have never had before that helps to expand my thinking I'm like, wow, like that person who, you know, let's just say, let's just use age. I have been in, I, I'm always in coaching. There's never a time I'm not in coaching. That's how much I believe in it. I have three coaches right now. And so as an example, the, the, I'm 40, there'll be a 25 year old. That's like light years ahead of me in terms of like business growth, income. I'm like, that's crazy. And now I get to understand from their world how they did it, which expands my thinking to say, well, man, the way you put that, it makes it to Colton, your point, I I can do that. I can actually, I see the path now. I understand it. Whereas before you're sitting there by yourself with your own thoughts, your own limiting beliefs. It's almost virtually impossible to see outside of those limiting beliefs until your mind has been expanded by seeing what other people can do. Does that make sense? 100%. Yeah, they're, you're hiring external eyes to per, and ears to provide like a more accurate picture of your your current reality. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It helps to expand. The, just we all have limiting beliefs. I fight them every day. I know you guys do too. I fight them every single day. I have fears. I have insecurities. I have doubts. All of that. Being in coaching and being surrounded with people that are like minded that are also in coaching. Help me to break through those mental barriers. And yeah. going back to my story about my brother, hold on one sec. It's like that. Could, that's one of the key things. We all have the same upbringing. You can't blame it on that. We all had the a fucked up, terrible, bad upbringing. So you can't blame it on that. We're all on the same page there. We all came from the gutter. Well, well how is it? Brandon is in the penthouse, and and you guys are still struggling. You know, living check to check. You know, what is the fucking difference? Well, I think it's fair to say. It's exactly what we're talking about. I've been exposed to performers on this planet that they aren't exposed to. My mind has been opened up to a whole new world of opportunity that theirs haven't been because their decision to look at the investment of coaching in themselves and not understanding that concept. Go ahead, Colton. No, I I was just agreeing with what you were saying, you know, and it's like, I, I just thought of an analogy, but the traditional education system is just like, you know, take, taking a train, like to get from Detroit to Chicago 
it's like you're, you're just kind of taking a train versus coaching or hiring a mentor. It's a time machine, you know, oh. like you, you just, it's just a time machine. You just instantly get 30 years of their, whatever they've done or, or that from that 25 year old, like who knows how much time and money that 25 year old spent to get to where he's at. Now you get to Dude. right away. You so know? good. The time machine. I think I told Ben, I think I told you this, the value of coaching whether, whether someone coaches with us or they have a coach with somebody else, the value of the coach isn't necessarily, how, how do I say this? I think the value of coaching has more to do with that coach's failures versus yeah. their wins. That's what you're investing in. That's the time machine totally. Colton's talking about. I have 20 years of mistakes. You're buying their ignorance. That's right. You Somebody who coaches with me, you're buying 20 years of my failure and speeding up the process so you don't have to go through 20 years of failure. I could just, you can avoid all those landmines. You could have it all right now. That's the time machine. The other, and Ben, not to take away from you if you have a point to add, but the other thing that, that coaching does too is like, let's say you've been in real estate the last, you know, six, seven years as an example. And, and you know, you've made 50, 70 grand and, and you feel like you're kind of missing out. Like you haven't been hitting your goals the last five years, right? Well, if you find a coach, whether us or somebody else, like uh, it's funny, I talk people into other coaching programs all the time because I'm sure. like, well, we don't really do that, but I've been a part of this guy. Like try, try that. But when you find the right coach, you're making up for lost time as well. Like mm. you, you can earn in the next 24 months or 12 months what you what you've missed out on the last five years great point mm -hmm. you can make up money you can't you can't make up time but you can you can exponentially make up that income over a 12 to 24 month period so like i feel like another reason a lot of people don't take the leap of faith in coaching is maybe they feel it's too late right or maybe it's just not gonna be like they're the special case that it won't work for but you can collapse time very quickly to make up for what you've missed out on mm -hmm. yeah yeah, that's really good point. That's really good insight. You know, and to expand on that. Yeah. I was just going to say like there's different levels, right? People think it needs to be this crazy big coaching program or this super expensive things. I mean, look at the value that people give in a book. They give their whole yeah. life's work in a book. Who For can't 10 bucks. figure out how to get 10, 15 dollars together to get a book? Yeah, oh my gosh. I I what a what a phenomenal point. I mean, most of my mentors, I've never met. Yeah. Let, let that sit in. Yep. You know, you know, Ben hit it. You, you have some of the world's greatest minds to ever walk the planet, put their life's best work in a $10 audiobook. And it's amazing people don't even take that, take them up on that. And Brandon and I, we've talked, you and I and Colton, I think we were all on a walk one time talking about the fact that would you rather spend a day with this person or read their book? And right. I think we were talking about the fact that you'd probably get more from their book. Yeah. yeah. They're, it's kind of like a journal. They're telling you these things, even things, maybe you don't even know what to ask if you yeah. were sitting there having lunch with them or whatnot. And you just get so much good stuff from somebody's biography or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so the next thing I had on my notes is, you know, the, the value of coaching for me is the coach, you're paying the coach to confront you. You see, the problem I think in most of our lives is Confronting somebody is not comfortable, you know, especially in the, in, in the, in the context of real estate sales, it's more prominent than anywhere else because it goes against the interest of the people you're surrounded with to confront you. Your broker is not going to confront you on coming into the office earlier, staying later, prospecting more. Why? Because he or she's scared that you're going to leave and go to another brokerage. So they're not going to confront you on anything. They just want to please you. You know, they're just going to tiptoe around and just make sure you're always happy. You're good. Here's some cookies. Here's some milk. You know, here's some coffee. We got little treats. They're never going to confront you. The agents in your office aren't going to confront you. They look at you as competitors. They don't want you to win. That's a whole leave the herd. That's the crab theory. 
You know, in fact, they want they want to pull you down from succeeding, if anything. Right. They don't want to see you freaking win. The associations aren't going to confront you because they don't want to scare you out of the business. They don't they want the monthly fees. So the coach, when you started to invest in yourself, you, you have one person in your life who isn't worried about your BS. They're, you're paying them to confront you, to look at your insecurities, to, to rip apart all of your ego and break through to the truth. You know, I had a coaching session with my coach last week I was telling you guys about, you know, it's like he's not interested in, you know, like the perception that I'm trying to portray. He's not interested in my ego. He's not interested in any of that. He's interested in what, what is the truth and where are the areas that you suck at? And let's be honest. Let's, let's cut the BS, Brandon. Let's rip apart any, any type of front that you're trying to put on. Let's get down to brass tacks. That's what we're going to work on. To me, there's a lot of value in that. Let me plug my computer in. I want to, I know you, I mean, that's why you guys are here, by the way. The reason yeah. why you are, how I met you both yeah. was through a coaching relationship, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll expand on that. I, I think to take a step back, often people look at the coach to fill in all the gaps. But in my opinion, a really good coach takes the time first to lay the foundation and decide and discover and help you put together what your values are, what your plan is, what your mission is and then hold you accountable to all those things that you're talking about, but aligned with what you say you want. Yeah. Then yeah. speak truth to make sure you're on track. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and you brought up the next thing, you know, there's accountability around, ex you know, the, the behaviors, actions, attitudes towards the goal that you want. Listen, there, there's, there's just no lack of ambition in real estate sales. I mean, it's, you're going to be hard pressed to find somebody who gets into real estate sales and they say, yeah, I'm looking to be average. <laughs> I'm looking to be mediocre. You know, I'm looking to make as least as possible. Dude, real estate, as everybody knows, is an incredibly hard business. I mean, it doesn't make sense to be in this business and make minimum wage. It just doesn't make right. sense. It's too hard. You could go do something that's way easier if you're going to make like 30 grand a year, 40 grand a year. You could do so many other things where you don't have to work so many hours, seven days a week. It's way easier. So the accountability piece from the standpoint of coaching is around the actions that we're just not going to take on our own. The best analogy of this of all time is the is is the push-up that... that how do, how do I say this? There, there's two, there's two, this, this is the best analogy I can think of when it comes to accountability. You can, visibility is so important, right? One person does a push up when no one's looking versus doing that push up under a microscope of a coach, which push up will be performed better? Mm -hmm. Of course, the one that's under mass scrutiny because humans left on our own always, not sometimes, not most of the time, always take the path of least resistance. That's mm -hmm. why we need accountability and we need visibility. Because when we're being watched, we always perform better. Always. So a coach that's listening to your calls, looking at your game tape, looking at your game films, reviewing your listing presentation, you know, tracking your calls, reviewing your tracker, doing sessions where you're making a call and I'm listening to your call. Oh, that's a phenomenal way to say more on a call than you would by yourself. That's probably some of the best coaching that I've ever been through and offered to somebody. Because if you're in your, in, uh, by yourself in, a, in your basement, in your underwear, you're going to hit the parachute. An objection comes up, you're just going to chicken out, you're going to jump off the call. But if I'm there and I'm on your prospecting session with you live, Ben, you ain't going anywhere. You're not going to retreat as easy, and it's just like the push-up. I think there's so much value in, in that experience. What are your guys' thoughts on that visibility piece? Huge. Yeah, I mean, even, even like that, I mean, it's kind of just the same example, but like when we would bring team members on board 
our, our company here to ha- take incoming calls from, from students for enrollment. Like I remember one time you told me, Hey, your, your next call, like let's, let's use that kind of as an example mm, to share with how yeah. we run these calls. And I just remember being, all right, I, like I gotta be on my game. Like exactly, like 100%, you know, like I don't, I don't want to skip any steps. Like, and just something little as that. It's not a make or break. If I didn't have the best call or didn't close the person, it's not about that. It's not about the result. It's about Correct. the process. And sticking That's right. It's, it, it's about putting yourself in a position to perform. Yeah. And this goes back to the fixed mindset person, the one with an ego, who says, oh, I, I don't want that. They say they don't want that. Why? Because they don't want to be exposed, Ben. Mm. They don't want me to be there on a live prospecting call because – then they'll be exposed that their skills that they say they have mastered aren't as good as they say they are, right? And so I think that's some of the best, you know, most valuable thing from a coaching perspective is to constantly put yourself in a position to perform. That's the growth-minded person who says, listen, I surrender to the coach. I surrender to the coach. I know I can get better. And you just have to surrender to the fact that you don't know it all. And, and, you know, based over the last 10 years of coaching agents, oftentimes the feedback that I get is that's some of the best coaching that we do is you make a prospecting phone call and I break the entire thing down in great detail. We call that a game film. So um, the only other thing I had on my list real quick to break down is the obvious one. The obvious one when you get into coaching is you're not only learning that person's mistakes, but certainly you're learning their strategies, right? I think that's the obvious one, why people want to get into coaching is like the training aspect. And there's a big difference between training and coaching, but there is an aspect of that is like learning new things, learning a new skill. And I think there is a lot of value in that. You know, I think it's fair to say that if someone is getting a result that you're not getting that you want, I think it's very safe to say that they probably know some shit that you don't know. I mean, is that reasonable? Like a lot of people have a hard time with that. It's like, I I look back to some old business partners that couldn't accept that. You know, it's like, well, is it reasonable that they're winning at such a higher level than you because they know some shit that you don't know? They do a bunch of shit that you don't do on a more consistent, regular basis. I mean, isn't that pretty fundamental? But a lot of people have a hard time with that. So, I know both of you invest heavily into, I mean, we talk about it all the time in, in, in the online courses that we all invest in and the coaching and, and the stuff that we're doing. Colton, let me get your thoughts on that. I mean, you're a, I call Colton a 25-year-old genius. You know, the kid's 25, knows more than both you and I, Ben, put together. You know, it's insane. Well, why? Because the kid has probably every online course ever created in every aspect of business. That's probably why. Tell yes. us about that, Colton. Yeah, my, my mindset is like, the, I guess goes back to Hermosi and the the S and Me five hundred. Like almost for for the for literally two years in a row, every dollar I made outside of like paying rent, like pay, making sure we had money for our wedding, like outside of that, eating Taco Bell. Like, let's be honest, Taco Bell, Wendy's, yeah. all of it, golfing on the weekends, all of it. Yes. Outside of the priorities of my life, yeah. and, and almost to a fault though. I'd, but I'd rather be on this extreme than the other extreme. But almost to a fault. No, no thought. Oh, can I, oh, like $500 course. Oh, I needed to learn this one little thing. Yeah. Let me just get it. Like, boom, easy decision, instant decision. And I'm not saying everybody do that. Like I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but even the bad, the bad (laughs) course, the bad courses I've purchased or the things that, oh man, this would, this was a rip off or what they, they didn't fulfill on their promises. Like, dude, you can get one thing from it. You can meet one person. You can learn well, one hold strategy. On. You just hit it. You just touched on it. And I thought you were going to go on it. Like the reason why I say get them all, you know, I am a course coach whore. Yeah. And the reason for that is what I thought you were going to say. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. Here's why. Yeah. Because in a terrible online course or in a coaching relationship where I didn't get maybe the perceived value. I actually got more value from that on what not to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot that, of value in 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 learning something or learning what not to do as much as there is what to do, right? And so like, wow, I'm glad I didn't fucking do that, right? Yes. So so good or bad, you still get a lot of value. Cole, what are we gonna say? My, my context to that, I agree 100%. Where I fell in the trap of, 
and where a lot of people come to us falling in the trap of, and I'm sure other places as well, where you think you're swiping your credit card, you've solved your problem, and then, mm. oh, and then you see the next one, and that now you've got just like these these physical books that could be sitting up there on the shelf, you've got digital dust sitting on your, your bookmarks bar. True. That you never touch. And so my my the thing I would do differently, the, the mindset of like, don't even think about it, I can learn. I I want to have ever everybody to have. But the other thing is just don't do too many at once, especially Great if they're point. conflicted. That that's the that's the okay. thing. You want to make sure you, you get the value. It's from. a combination too, yeah. I believe. You you have to take the training. And then get a coach to help you make sure you're implementing it. That's yeah. right. It, that's a really good point. Both of you brought up. Great. You and I have both done that. Yes. Where we're like, you know, like we've probably spent combined like 30, 50 grand on, on courses or coaching that we maybe haven't logged into or like kind of went yeah. through for like one little thing and then kind of just forgot about it and moved on to the next. So, but even that's still valuable, right? Because you're, because the other thing is too, like, even if you don't finish the course or, 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 or do everything it says, like there's something, I don't know why or what it is, but I think it's some type of principle in the world or, or universal thing. Like when you commit to yourself with money, like when you're investing in yourself through a yeah. coach, you're not investing in the coach. You're investing in yourself through them. Yeah. Something happens. You know, even if you don't take full advantage, something just typically clicks and you're showing yourself you're worth it. And now you start to behave differently. Well, certainly you pay attention to what you pay for. Well, that's for sure. Yeah. You know, but, but man, you both just said so many things. I don't want to lose my thought, but like, yeah, like for a three, $400 course and, and the scarcity mindset person's like, oh, I don't know about it. I'm like, I, I can't afford not to, because if I just get one little nugget out of there, like as an example, this is way outside of real estate, but this is why this is so important. I just I just got Brandon Carter's course not too long ago. I told you that, Colton, right? Yeah. You know, in the whole videos, he's just screaming at you. You know, he's just yelling <laughs> yeah. at you. But but there was I, I think I shared a couple nuggets with you last week. I'm like, this is so good. Like that alone was worth the 200 bucks or 300 bucks, whatever it was. And, and I'll, if I can give a little context, that because you you showed it to me, the nugget wasn't like something you learned from the course it was seeing how he did something inside that you were able Got to connect it. the dots of of like yes. wow like this would bring value to our students like what if i recreated this for us and so it Great wasn't even the call. content it oh was that's so that's exactly what it was I, it wasn't none of the nonsense it wasn't of, none of his yelling and screaming yeah it was like how he had some things structured. I'm like, wow, our, our courses could be better if we had them like that. That was a great point. I think, I think Gary V says that too a lot like don't listen to what I say like watch what I do. Like, like and, and you were able to witness inside like what he was doing. And it's like that, you know, that was just as valuable. Yeah. And then Ben, I want to make sure I don't forget what he just said. The difference between training and coaching training, oh, yeah. they're both really important. And we'll end the, and we'll end the conversation with this. They're both important. Training is the dissemination of information. That's it. Coaching is the implementation of the information. It's the doing, it's the execution of the information. It's the doing, it's the act of doing what it is that you learned. That's a big difference. That's why I think a lot of people have questions about, well, what's the difference between your guys' private mastermind and your coaching? I just told you. One is information-based. Here's what to do. The coaching is the execution, the implementation of what you learn. Because information without implementation has no value. Like if you're just yeah, going to yeah. learn a bunch of shit, read a bunch of books, go through a bunch of courses, go to a bunch of seminars, do all of that and do nothing, you still don't get better. So let's make that real clear. It's the information by itself has zero value. Oh, well, that's bullshit, Brandon. I don't believe you. Okay, let me prove it to you. This is the best analogy ever of this. If information has all the value, then why is it that the group of people that have more information about human health are the most unhealthy humans. How is that possible? What am I talking about? I'm talking about physicians. They know more about human biology and human health than any other human on the planet. Can't really debate that, right? They have more education. They have more information. All the studies go to show that group of people, physicians, is the most unhealthy group of professionals out of any other segment in the marketplace. 
That just goes to show the people with the most information, they don't do shit with it. It doesn't have any value. So that's the difference between training and coaching. I think that's really important. Exactly what I was going to say. I mean, you, you've said it so many times, but it's like, I mean, you want to lose weight. It's all the information's out there. Yeah, you know how to lose weight. Very you could give a few. standing ovation on how to lose weight. Everyone can. Everyone very can. few do on their very own. Very few do. Well. You got to you know, get the and code. It's, Yeah, sorry, I keep cutting you off. I just, I'm so passionate about personal development because I'm the poster child for it. Dude, yeah. I have no business living the life that I am. I mean, truly. I'm not trying to be cute. I, I, I'm being honest. You know, like you can ask anybody I went to high school with. They are in disbelief. They'll tell you, like, I, I just, I'm stunned. I, I, Brandon, I, 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 you know, I got to be honest. You know, I can't believe you are. I mean, that's what they tell me all the time. I was that kid. You sure you're not selling drugs? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was that kid. Like, you know, the kid in high school, they're like, oh, dude, that kid's a loser. That kid ain't going to amount to nothing. I was him. Sideways hat, you know, earrings, gangster, wannabe, you know, just knew it all. That was me. That was me. I was that kid, you know? And so anyway, that, that's what coaching has transformed who I am, who I have become. I know the same goes for both of you. Yeah. We could keep going on this, but we probably shouldn't. The people are probably <laughs> napping, sleeping, got their feet up, pillowcase up, <laughs> pillow. But anyway, I, I just, I love this topic. Any last things you guys want to add? No. We'll do part two next time. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Gentlemen, appreciate you guys very much. Everybody in the live audience, appreciate you listening to me babble about this. Uh, obviously, it's just made a, such an impact on my life. I want, I want everybody to experience this. I want everybody to have the same experience that I have. And I continue to level up, you know? I just, I told, I'll, I'll, one more story. One yes. more story. Yes. This will be nice. This will be really nice. Um, especially for the people in the live mastermind that are still hanging out. The handful of people still hanging out. This will be a nice little treat for them. So we are, you know, every month in our mastermind, we have a special guest that that comes in and we do a live virtual event, right? And Colton, I think you know what I'm about to get in. Well, both of you know what I'm about to get into. And we have a really, really special guest coming and i won't say who it is i can't give that away yet we have a really special guest um coming in i think september colton is that right yes this is one of my favorite authors um he has some amazing books that i have shared with our community over the years and we've been trying to get him to come to our live you know be a special guest at one of our live virtual mastermind events and so we finally get a hold of him and, you know, assistant comes back and he says, hey, it's going to be a lot of money. <laughs> and they come back with the number. And at first, I'm like, shit, it just kind of kind of like knocked the wind out of me a bit. I'm like, damn, I really want him. I think our people would get a lot of value out of that event. And the, and the, the number just kind of set me back a bit. But then I came back. And I think I, I share this with both of you, and certainly Colton, you and I have had a lot of conversations on it, on I, I found myself in a little bit of a scarcity mindset. And I said, no, this doesn't make any sense. If we invest in this, we invest in ourselves, we invest in this community, we invest in this event, our people could benefit for it, from it for life, for life. And that's the other thing you get with coaching. You can't unsee it. You can't unhear it. You can't unlearn it. You make the investment once and then you get the compounding returns for life. I had a coach 15 years ago and I'm still implementing what she taught me, you know, and I'm still winning from that, you know? And so anyway, I thought that was a good story. It was relevant. Um, it's just hard for some people that have a scarcity mindset to invest in themselves, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, maybe this is the nail in, maybe we keep going for 30 more minutes. I don't know, but um I, I, I've done it both ways and I'm thinking about what you're saying. I've learned from this person so much. I've also learned from my mistakes and am continuing to benefit from those. However, yeah. from getting bloodied up, I got a coach and have decided that although it stings up front to invest in coaching, it saves me some headache and pain along the way by just getting that person who got bloodied up through mistakes, this, that, and the other, and getting to benefit from those. 
Yeah. Anyway, good stuff. Good stuff today. This was very enjoyable conversation. I appreciate you guys. And uh, we'll see everybody on Wednesday.